Hi everyone, it's Pat from Scrivener Art and Design. Today I'm in my studio and I'm working on this painting that I started as a demo for the local chapter of the Federation of Canadian Artists. So I wasn't able to record the first part, but hopefully you will gain something from me working on the finishing details. So let's get at it. I'm going to fix the hemline on this cape to make it a little more interesting and then also clean up the skirt and make it a little more vibrant. So I'm going to try and save some of my dots there, but basically now I'm past the blocking in stage and I'm looking to clarify and make my colors more vibrant, add some finishing details, make any adjustments as I go. I'm still trying to hang on to some of the original messy background that I started with. So just putting some more color over top. Sometimes I like to have very solid flat color to juxtapose against the busyness of my patterns and messy background. So these are differences that add contrast to your painting. So going back in, working on this dress in the background, lightening up her scarf. Now I did do a sketch of this painting in the YouDoodle app before I started. So if you see me glancing away, it is because I am looking at my drawing that I did. I'm giving this gal some boots just to add some dark values now. And grounding the bottom, I've decided to paint it darker than the top. And I've kind of lost that gal on the left. I've lost her legs to some degree. Refining shapes in the background as well. And just coming in making some differences, adding some polka dots with my little stamp. I believe this is a Martha Stewart uh, stamp. It has a set of uh, four different sizes. just kind of working throughout the painting, adding a little bit more definition to my shapes in the dresses so they stand out a bit more as individual pieces. Now I'm just refining this shape a little and I'm using chalk to make an outline before I actually go in and do some painting on it. I've decided to put that leg um, I had it in there before and I painted it out. So I'm putting a leg on that girl in the background as if she's walking out of the painting. Legs are interesting. Uh, sometimes if you put all the legs in, it's just too many lines at the bottom of your painting. So now I'm putting a part of the cape in a where the sun would be hitting it to create some variety on the cape so it's not as flat. A 
again refining some of the background. Now I don't worry about the background color always being exactly the same. I like to have different colors so that it's a little bit modeled and it's more interesting. Also painting the background several times gives it much more depth. So adding a red hat to this gal and some orange hair over here. So even though orange may not be my preferred hair color, in this case it creates balance in the painting. Again, working around on the faces and the legs, just going back and forth. And I'm going to change the color of these legs so they pop out more on my canvas on that dark background. Push that dress back a bit with a lighter value. Now I'm still trying to save the collage elements that I have in the painting, but decided that they were sticking out a little too much, so painted them in and softened them a little with a cloth. So again, continuing back and forth between the background and the shapes, defining edges, maybe correcting, correcting shapes, just kind of like minor adjustments. always building up layers to give my work lots of depth. So things often change many times as I am working uh, because it's all about creating a nice harmonious painting and balance with your shapes and colors. With my faces, I don't often put too much in the way of details, but I do want a little bit of shadowing to give them a bit of depth. So I'm going to paint the one side lighter than the other to create that depth. So again, wiping back after I've painted on that collage so you can still read through it when you're up close. I believe it says something about be happy. And on her cape, my collage piece says fearless heart. And I think that's what I'm going to title this painting. Um, the gal in the cape she looks like she's very bold and out there and totally fearless. So I think that's what I'm going to call it, Fearless Heart. So changing, changing it in here, making it just one solid shape. So this painting would be predominantly a cool painting on the side of the color wheel, blues and greens, with my accents of warm. So when you're painting with both cool and warm, you want to be sure that you don't end up with a painting that is half of cool and half of warm. You want to push it to one side or the other. So this is definitely leaning towards a cooler tone painting.
So I have used different blues in here. I've got my teal blue, which was a fluid paint. I have ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. And then I have mixed them down into tints as well to get some more shades. And I've made my greens out of primaries, blues and yellows. It's coming in doing a little bit of detail line work with a small brush. Just giving it a little bit of accent and highlight using red. This can kind of connect things together. Now I just want to do it in a painterly way, not too outlined, but just little hints. It's kind of connecting, connecting things together a little bit with that outline. I'm using a woody stabilo here. I'm adding a little bit of a teal color in places. Now the woody stabilo is not watertight. It is soluble, so I'll be careful moving forward that I don't smear this. And I can use um, a workable fixative to spray it so that it won't smudge when I continue painting or when I seal it with a isolation coat before varnishing. Uh, you want to make sure that it is very sealed in. But I do like using uh, something that's crayon-like or a pen, china marker to do some outlining work, some scribbles. Um, I just like to mix my medias up, not only work with a brush. I often use scrapers as well. So I've gone back and put some legs in on the gal on the right. And I put one going right out of the painting, so just a partial leg. And I like to extend things beyond the painting. I think it takes the viewer, um, it allows the viewer to expand their view and kind of fill in the shapes. It makes your painting actually feel bigger maybe than it is if you left a lot of negative space around the edges. It's hard sometimes to know what to do and here you see that I actually beheaded my gal. <laughs> sometimes it's necessary even if you put a lot of time and work into it. I just felt that she was feeling too tall and I needed to bring her down a little bit. So uh, let that dry and I'll be going back and working on that. I often uh, test out my ideas on an app like Udoodle to see what will work and if I like a different color somewhere or if I need to adjust a shape and it's a safe way of doing it. If you don't have the technology, another thing you can certainly do is take a picture and print it out and then uh, just draw on top of it and make your changes that way or you could use a piece of um, cellophane over top or acetate sheet and go, go about it that way. So sometimes when we're near the end, we don't actually want to make a lot of major changes on our painting without test driving them somewhere first. So I'm going to lighten up the legs of this one as well, but leave some of the green outline. And you can see that I've put her hair in to be the ultramarine blue. 
and I'm going to give her an arm as well. And again, adding an arm on this gal and taking it right out of the painting. And I'm going to change the color of these legs to put them more in the background and lighten up these ones in the foreground. Try to make them different. Legs can be tricky uh, positioning them so that that they look like they belong to the right person and that you don't end up with too many legs. Um, it can just start to look very busy. So even with arms, I don't put arms on everybody. Uh, I just find it's, it's a little too much. Again, just going over things, making them a little richer. Doing a little bit more detail around my focal lady. Oh, there goes the hat. Another adjustment. So there's often lots of fine tuning that happens near the end of the painting um, at this stage. And now I'm lightening up my background. This is going to pop my figures forward more. So I had some collage here that wasn't um, having good, great adhesion and I'm lifting it off because I don't feel it's going to be good and stable over time. So I am lifting it off and I'll sand it back and paint it back in. putting her hat back on. Making this dress more vivid. And I think now I'm really near the end and I'm gonna quit fussing with it and just view it on my painting wall for a while before I varnish it. I hope you enjoyed that and please leave a comment or a question if you have any and subscribe to my channel so you get notifications in the future for videos when I put them up.